here from helpmegraduate.com. Now we're going to make a little bit of a combination with two past videos where I promised you I was going to say something really special. Remember the first video, uh, the first series of videos when I did a derivatives of exponents and that I said that there was something about the exponent rule, you know, kx power to n, uh, k and n being rational numbers that I wanted to mention with combination of the uh, chain rule video. Remember when I started the chain rule video that I said most uh, chain rule uh, are you going to be working with on functions that somehow have trigonometric exponentials like e or something or natural logarithmic numbers, okay, natural logarithmic functions, okay. Now I want to combine both videos and also make an addition with radical functions, okay. And uh, I want to tell a real life, personal life experience that happened to me in a previous class. We had a final one and uh, there was an activity that we had to do, a, a question I had, we had to do with the uh, a function. And if I correctly recall, it looked a little bit like this, y equals um, x minus 3 over cubic root of 1 minus x. And a lot of people in the uh, final got freaked out, especially, you know, this is like first time you see a final and, and you get thrown out with a cubic root and a fraction. So a lot of people just said, well, I mean, I have to use the rule of uh, division of a derivative and wow, I have to square this and then do the derivative of this and the upper part and then how do I subtract this from this? I mean, it's gonna be too much of a disaster and a lot of people, you know, just couldn't be able to make it. But the main essence right here that the exercise I wanted to show you and that I realized in the exam is that you have to rearrange the function to look something like this, x minus three times uh, 1 minus x power to 2 minus 1 cube and this makes the uh, derivation process easier because you know as you can see the exponent goes down and then you know the three cancel each other and it makes it a little bit easier okay so uh, what I want to show you is how exactly do radical functions and you know square cubic fourth roots whatever use the chain rule and is there a close relationship with this well yes there is so we have to be very careful Okay? There are some times where you have to be very, very uh, delicate with the procedure and sometimes you can move it along a bit mechanically. Okay? So do you remember when you were taught the rule of finding the, deriv the uh, derivative of square root? Let's say fx is a uh, square root of x. Well, the uh, prime of this would look something like 1 over to square root of x, right? And that's just pretty much what it was, and you can demonstrate it using the definition of the derivative. But uh, in reality, what is happening here is that you also have a chain rule here implicit. The only thing is that you don't really see it because the internal derivative going on here, the internal derivative of x is one, so you don't really see it. But what happens if, for instance, if instead of this, you would have fx uh, square root of x cubed. Okay, then things are going to be a little bit interesting and you're going to be able to see what I am saying. Okay, so um, if you have square root of x cubed, well, hmm, oh, well, I guess f prime in this case is going to be a chain rule. Well, yeah, why? Because I have a variable, it's called x. What happens to x? I cube it. Then what happens to x? I do the square root. Oh, but those are two functions. That is correct. And if you have two functions acting, you have composition of functions, chain rule. G, or the minor function, is x cubed. And f, the major function, is the square root. Okay? So remember what is the uh, chain rule says? The uh, derivative of a composition of functions is going to be f prime evaluated in g times g prime, okay, derivative of the internal function. So, this right here is going to look a little bit different. Well, let's do it. f prime equals f 1 over 2 evaluated in g, so we have here square root of x cubed times the internal derivative. And what is the internal derivative of g? Derivative of x cubed, which is 3 x squared, okay? 
And there you go. There is the derivative for this function. It's a chain rule. You see it? Okay? There's two functions acting. I'm going to move this a little bit to the left so that you can see a little bit better. Just to simplify. And this is going to look like this. 3x squared. Now, the point that I want to bring you is the following, okay? There is a chain rule implicit right here in this exercise, but there's also a little bit of simplifying with the exponents, because if you correctly recall, if I have something like x bar to a over x bar to b, this is equal to, say, x bar to a minus b, okay? So, this is equal to, say, that I have 3 halves of x bower to 2 over x bower to 3 halves. Remember that the denominator in the fraction is the degree of the square root, and that would mean that I would have 3 halves of x bower to 2 minus 3 halves. 2 minus 3 halves is 4 halves minus 3 halves, okay? 4 halves minus 3 halves is 1 half. There you go. See? Now this method is a little bit long, right? And this is, you know, using the chain rule thing, okay? Which is good because we get the grip to practice it. But also realize the following, okay? You, and let me delete this for a second. You can also, or you could have also, used the exponent rule which is the following. Visualize f as um, y equals x to 3 halves. And if they ask me to find y prime on this, well, y prime, using the rule of the exponent derivative, is just as simple as 3 halves goes down, x power 2, 3 halves minus 1, 1 half. And there you go. It's already done in one step and one line, okay? So, I want to show you the analogy between radicals and radicals and chain rules. There is a chain rule happening in radicals, okay? It's just that the nature of the exponent happening doesn't allow you to see it. Now, there's a particular occasion where you will see it, and I'm going to show it to you right now, okay? Let me delete this. What happens if we have something like y equals the square root of sin x? Aha! Now things get interesting, right? You cannot do, and you cannot do something, this is a mistake, something like y prime, one half, uh, square root of sin x. Ta-da! No, 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 no. Okay? Oh, but th but that's the square root rule. No, remember, there is a composition of, rule of, of functions happening, and you have to use the chain rule here, okay? Remember, I have a variable. It's called x. What do I do with it? Calculate sin. Then what do I do with it? Square root. Whoa, that means there is a composition of functions. Correct. When there's a composition of functions, you have to use the chain rule. And as you can see, we have a radical involved. So that's why I note the observation now. Okay? So, which one is G? Well, the inner thing is G, and the square root is F. So, the derivative of this is going to be, again, F prime evaluated in G times G prime. Chain rule. Okay? So, in this particular case, we're going to have F prime, derivative of the square root, exactly as the rule says, okay? One half of square root of sin x. But we have to do the additional thing. And what is the additional thing? G prime, the internal derivative, okay? 
Derivative of sin, cos x. Okay? And now this is the answer to the exercise, okay? Now here we have it. So this moves a little bit to the left because 1 times cos is cos. And that is the answer of the function. Okay? Keep in mind the following. When you have a radical, there is a very, very big chance probability that you're going to have a chain rule derivative involved. Okay? Let's do another example in another video.